What's up, Snow Tracks Nation? I'm here in Sherbrooke, Quebec at Skidoo's Training Center, and I'm gonna be joined by Robert Martel, Global Product Manager, and Pascal Vincent, Director of Global Product Strategy, and they're gonna be answering some of our questions and some of your questions about some of the most highly anticipated new sleds for model year 24. On deck for this video is the Grand Touring Electric with Rotax E-Power. Let's get to it. So I'm really excited about this discussion because this is such an interesting vehicle, such a, a, a interesting move for, for BRP. Um, but really we have to take this vehicle in context before we go any further and understand that it has a specific purpose. It wasn't just built, let's just build an electric snowmobile. Let's build an electric snowmobile for this purpose. So why don't you give me an overview of the Grand Touring Electric and uh, kind of let us in on the, on the background of it and also go into detail about what is that specific purpose. Well, as you see in for model year 24, we're introducing the Grand Touring Electric, which is, uh, which is a very interesting story because it started a few years ago, uh, mainly in uh, Scandinavia, where there, were, uh, there was tour operators asking for electric snowmobile. Mm -hmm. So there's a big demand over there and uh, the program started uh, with that. So, <clears throat> Rotax has been involved, the engineering and Valcor has been involved, and the, I would say the customer needs were very tackled towards those uh, two operators. And in fact, this year, we are introducing this unit, and it will be exclusive for Uncharted Society that offer tours, guided tours. The unit is delivering about 50 kilometers of range in the best conditions, but it suits perfectly the usage that those two operators uh, We'll, we'll do it. And so what you what you want to do, what we want to do, is we want to stop that that consumer who may be watching this, that general public from going, oh, 50 kilometers, like, oh, it's not going to work for me. It's not meant to work for you. It was never designed to go on a 200 kilometer rate. That's not what this is for. Um, but what it is for, it's perfect for. Because as you said, it was designed with that one usage scenario in mind. And I think that's really interesting to say, this is the market, this is what we're gonna go after, and we're gonna do it better than anybody could possibly do it. Um, there's a lot going on here. This is this is a pretty technical snowmobile. There's there's a lot of things that, as motorheads, two-stroke guys, four-stroke guys, we just, we just have never been here before. Um, but let's talk about the configuration of the sled and how it's been designed, because there's a lot of unique things there as well. Tell me about the layout. Not, not motor power wise, the layout of the chassis, because that's something you notice right away. Yeah, well, it, uh, one of the interesting configuration is the, the track and the skid, right? The track is a 120 by 14 inches wide by three quarter of an inch lug profile. It's not a lot of traction, but it's perfect for efficiency. You know, we wanted to have the most efficient drivetrain and the skid and the, the, the track was too key components. And I would add to this, uh, the ski and the drivetrain, you know, the, the drive components that has been optimized to use uh, the least energy possible out of the battery. So you've actually designed a ski specifically for this electric vehicle that has less drag than any other ski. Absolutely. And you know, a fun fact, um, this vehicle has about the same center of gravity as a Grand Touring Sport 600As. And you need to know why is it so important the 600A uh, center of gravity is about perfect and not too much pressure on the skis, which is great. Not too much pressure means more efficient skis uh, on the trail. So you used that sort of, um, that perfect scenario and copied it, tried to make this fit that because you knew it was already efficient. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> we've been in the business for uh, about 64 years, so we have <laughs> some, some winters behind the belt. So we have a lot of engineers with a lot of know-how, so we apply all the good, uh, the good learnings over those years. I guess one of the visually, the most visually strange things about this sled is the 120 skid with the big factory two-up seat on it. Um, now, two things about that. First, explain that, but second, that's not, that's not a, a, an R motion. That's an SC5, isn't it? That's right, that, this is an SC5. So as I mentioned earlier, the track and the skid is for efficiency. And just so you know, the sliders are made of Vespel in order to reduce friction. And again, improving efficiency. So, um, but we have a 129 chassis. Okay. It's to allow two up, but also to allow the link tunnel bag 
This is a request from our, uh, you know, Uncharted Society and two operators. They ask to have a storage at the back. And that's basically the reason why we have a 120 on a 120 inch track on a 129 uh, uh, tunnel. Again, built for a purpose for a specific customer, but delivering on all of their requests. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Um, so how, with, with a shorter track, with a 120 track and a full two up seat, how much work did you do and, and studying did you do about how a two up passenger is going to affect the handling of the sled? Because it's a very short track for a two up rider. It is short, but uh, I can reassure you it works and it's perfectly uh, designed for it. In fact, um, we adjust the, uh, the vehicle suspension and calibration in order to suit two up and it works perfectly. And just to give you an example, uh, back in the days, not long time ago, our MXZ on the Rev XS chassis were 120, uh, 120 inch length track. We sold tons of one plus one seat on those units. And we had one. And you have one, and yeah. so nobody, nobody complained because you know, it's uh, calibrated accordingly. That is, uh, it, it's just, it's one of those things when you get used to looking at snowmobiles day in and day out, every day, all year, year after year, and all of a sudden one shows up that doesn't look like the rest, you immediately are drawn to it and, and yeah. wonder why. But um, there is a lot of interesting trickery done on this sled to improve efficiency. Um, tell me about, as much as you can, as much as you're allowed to, about the drive line. How is it laid out? What are some of the specifics and things that people are going to be interested to know? Well, uh, first of all, all the components are um, proprietary. So e-power belongs to Rotax. We develop our own electric motor. We develop our own lithium-ion ion battery pack, uh, inverter. All the electronics is, is built, designed in-house, not necessarily uh, built in-house, but the battery is. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, the electric motor develop about 50 horses, 50 HP, so which is more than enough to move two up people up to 60 kilometers per hour, let's say. And again, uh, efficiency is all about, everything is all about efficiency. Um, point that you note, that you may note, is that we have two keys that will come with the unit. We call the, the first key the tourist key, that will limit the speed at 40 kilometers per hour. It's plenty for someone that's never ridden a snowmobile, 40 kilometers per hour or about 15 miles per hour is plenty. And there's another key called the guide key that will unlock the speed to 60 kilometers per hour. So it's electronically limited in order to have some range, obviously, left in the battery. So it's, it's, not, it's not just about range, it's about safety, but it's not just about safety, it's about range. So you're, you're able to extend your range by limiting the speed, which also makes the sled safer for beginners. So it's a win-win all the way around. Correct. And another uh, element uh, that helped to improve efficiency is the regen. Right. Okay. So the motor, when you um, brake, let's say you're going down a hill in the brake, in fact, the engine, not the engine, but the motor will act as a generator. It will recharge the battery and also slow down the vehicle. So that, again, helping to improve efficiency. Now, I'm one of very few people outside of BRP staff who've actually ridden this. And, and I wrote it one up, I wrote it two up. And that was one of the things I noticed right away was the regen braking slowing me down in the corners to the point where I almost never had to use the brake. Even after, you know, having the guide key and going 60 kilometers an hour into a corner, you just let off the throttle and it just slows down for you. Um, it was mm -hmm. kind of a, something you had to relearn. You had to relearn, you always, always ride the brake. Didn't need to ride the brake on this one. So exactly. yeah, different riding experience for sure. Um, so what are some of the, what's some of the feedback that you've got from, from customers? Now, I think it would be interesting to know feedback from the customers it's intended for, but also from the general public. I'm sure you're getting feedback about this thing. And, and what, what's some of the stuff you've heard out there? People want to know, people like, people are curious about. Yeah, there's a lot of curiosity about this sled for sure. It's the first one uh, for, uh, for Skidoo. So uh, basically attracting a lot of attention from the market, of course. And uh, throughout the winter, we've had a lot of chances to get some people uh, try it out. And, uh, you know, the media, of course, you guys are part of that. But we had some other occasions. And always the comments that we're getting is that people, uh, you know, coming from the snowmobile uh, industry and then jumping on an electric snowmobile like this, you know, it's a totally different experience and uh, and people just love the feeling. They love the fact that there's no smoke and smell. You're not getting anything, you know, coming back from the engine. Also, uh, the experience that you're getting when you're riding in the outdoors, you have like a different type of outlook 
in terms of riding experience are going to be more aware of your surroundings when you're slowing down you can really appreciate the nature a little bit more so in that sense you know it's bringing a different type of riding you know into our industry and this is a very attractive product for people you know that aren't really familiar with snowmobiling and it allows them to have something that's easy to adapt to and that's not intimidating and that they can really you know uh, learn to uh, learn to have fun with you know, as they start off in the snowmobile industry. So we've had a lot of good comments. But we want to be clear, this isn't going to replace your 850 E-Tech. That's not what you're going for. Anybody who loves their two-stroke slash four-stroke gas-powered sled, they don't need to be afraid. It's not, we do see a lot of comments about like, oh, I hope the industry doesn't go this way. That's not the plan. No, and in fact, you know, <clears throat> the actual technology, the actual infrastructure, and you know, what I'm seeing in the future, Internal combustion engine powered snowmobile will not go away uh, from our lineup. We'll keep it for a while, let's be honest. But it's matter of fact, there is a market for electric snowmobile. And more specifically from, you know, you know, the commercial operators, but also general public. But that being said, general public is not necessarily current customer. Uh, it could be you know, future new customer, new entrant that are looking, you know, a different ways to have fun during winter. So I think that's where we should focus eventually. But today, the focus is on Uncharted Society, exclusive to Uncharted Society. So another question we've had from our viewers here, and this one is from Riel de Châtelet, and he wants to know what is the long-term plan for electric snowmobiles? Yeah, in fact, we don't want to address, you know, all the, the, the segment will uh, to electrify all the segment. We will go, uh, you know, case by case. We want to make sure that we, there's a demand where we will uh, enter with an electric snowmobile, as we have currently with this, uh, you know, Grand Touring Electric. And for us, like to go, like let's say, in all segments right away with an electric solution. I don't think that uh, we're there yet. Uh, you know, just thinking about. Uh, uh, backcountry riding in deep snow. Uh, I mean, uh, the power parks are gonna. We're gonna be uh, in another time, I think, in terms of uh, innovation of all the technologies. Right now, we're focusing on something that's really, you know, purpose built for a specific need. And of course, uh, BRP's goal is to have, you know, an electric solution. And all our this is a mission that we uh, that we set forth. Uh, a few years ago and uh, having a solution for every product category and for Skidoo this is this is our you know model year 24 our, our first step in that arena so we're super excited about that. The other example is the rise the Sea-Doo rise right so we've seen a, a, a demand right there so we tap into this uh, motorcycle electric motorcycle yeah. with the pulse and origin uh, once again we've seen there's a market there's a timing also um, so it's not we want to address, you know, the full snowmobile lineup or everything at BRP. We will be very uh, surgical and making sure there is a demand and we'll deliver on that market. Because BRP doesn't deliver products that don't work the way you promise them to, do you? Mm. DR BRP delivers products that work the way you say they're going to work and the way the consumer wants them to work. So just electrifying something for the sake of it isn't going to give the consumer what they expect from BRP. So that's a really, really smart way to go about doing things. Very impressive. So describe for me why these tour operators that you've built this sled specifically for, what is the situation that they're in where this is the sled that makes the most sense? This is what they're demanding. Why are they demanding it? I'll give you uh, one example. It's not, uh, it's not the case for all tour operators, but a majority, especially in Europe and some places in North America, uh, those operators are having a lot of pressure from, um, from um, other tour operator, for example, there, I know there's a big company in, uh, in uh, Finland that are offering services of uh, guiding snowmobile tours to cruise ships, okay? So, and this cruise ship company is saying to the, this tour operator, you know what? You could do probably more business if you would remove the smoke and smell and have something electric to deliver a totally new experience. I'm selling experience, you should follow that. So there's a demand, so there's a pressure from, from those uh, cruise ship operator, uh, just to give you this example, but it, that's where the demand is coming from. Well, and in Europe too, there's a lot more expectations of things being electrified. I think I see yeah. they're very much early adopters. They're really much more in advance than we are. In pushing it very hard. So is it true that the consumers in that area, the people who are 
going to tour operators, not off a cruise ship, just saying, hey, honey, let's go rent a snowmobile for the day. Would those people be looking more for an electric experience versus a, a gas part experience too? Yeah, and definitely. And I think that there is a, there's a big pull from those customers because they're asking, you know, what they're, people are more and more like uh, uh, conscious of, uh, you know, what's going on with climate changes and things like that and in the choices that we're making. And a lot of people going on these tours are tourists. They've never ridden a snowmobile before in their life. So to have the possibility to go do this type of experience with something that has like zero emission is super attractive for them and you know it, it goes along with their values also and you know on, oftentimes they're new never driven a snowmobile before and they have a unique experience on something that's you know super easy super enjoyable and in an outdoor uh, outdoor experience uh, that they wouldn't live otherwise that ultimately is really good for the snowmobile industry Thank you so much for watching and keep in mind that this virtual hangout section is only one of four. So there's three other ones that you can tune into to find out even more about Skidoo's Model Year 24 lineup. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything.